There isn't a first rule of politics, but if there were one, it should probably be that in no circumstances should you tell voters that they'll be better off if they vote for the other guys. However, as Labour's dreadful results came in after the Hartlepool by-election, the Shadow Secretary of State for Transport did just that. It's a cringe-inducing moment. Let's take a look. The reason why I support Keir Starmer is because he is serious, he's professional, uh, and he will earn us the right to be heard. And that's what he's done in this campaign. But listen, it's a long journey. You know, the 2019 elections were not good elections for us. We knew it would take time to recover and rebuild and rebuild that trust. Uh, and we're in the very early stages of that, and it will take time. You say he's earned you the right to, the right to be heard, but clearly the voters of Hartlepool have not liked what they've heard from the Labour Party. They appear to, and you've virtually conceded, uh, that they have voted for the Conservatives here. So something wrong with Labour's either the message or the messenger. But from a Hartlepool perspective, the Tory uh, offer uh, was compelling. Uh, listen, look at the red wall seats surrounding you. Look at the investment in the town's fund, the restoring your railways fund, uh, the free ports, uh, and look what Tory MPs do when you elect them and the Tories funnel money towards them. And it's almost like a no-risk option. Listen, this by-election was never about changing the government. It was never about changing the Prime Minister. But it was a chance for people in Hartlepool to realise investment that for 11 years under the Tories, they have been denied. And it's clear that they've taken that choice. <laughs> I mean, I know... I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to give a critique of pork barrel politics. Pork barrel politics is the idea that central government hands out investment and cash for political gain. So the, the critique of Boris Johnson is he is investing particularly in those towns which he wants the Conservatives to win, or particularly handing out cash where there are either Conservative mayors or Conservative MPs because he thinks that will help them stay in power. I can see what he's trying to do. But on the face of it, I mean, how that came across is you've got a shadow minister for the Labour Party saying, if you vote Tory, in a so-called red wall area in somewhere like Hartlepool or a neighboring um, region, you will be richer. You will be better off. You will get more investment, right? He's telling you to vote Tory. Is that, what does he have to say about the Labour Party? Keir Starmer is serious and professional, but the Tories, um, they'll bring about investment into your town. But he even says, look at, look at the Tories in, in, in um, nearby towns, right? They're bringing in the money. It's a no risk thing to do. He's, he's basically a salesman for the Conservative Party. I know his point there is that this is a by-election. In a general election, we'll have a very different message. One, it doesn't really work like that. If people remember, oh, the Tories bring investment, if you're reinforcing the Tories bring investment, they're not going to say, oh, in this general election, maybe on a net level, if we vote Labour, that would give us more investment. No, that, that, that's not how people think. I suppose more immediately than that, Hartlepool isn't going to be the only by-election in, in the North East. In, in, in the coming weeks and months. There's very likely to be one in West Yorkshire, in Batley and Spen, because there a Labour MP is very likely, unless it's unless there's a really catastrophic night for, for Labour, um, will have been elected as the mayor of West Yorkshire. And she said she'll stand down um, as an MP if that happens. It's going to be a by-election in a very nearby place. And you've got Labour frontbenchers saying, oh, to be honest, if you live in the north of England and you're a Brexit voting place, probably in your best interest to vote for the Conservatives. Maybe think about voting for us, though, because we're serious and professional. What is that when Jeremy Corbyn and, and Labour in 2017 increased their share of the vote by 9.5%? And people say, he's not electable. What? Look, an election just happened and Labour increased its share of the vote by, by the most it's ever done since 1945. I mean, you can't say it's unelectable. You might not say they did enough to win or whatever, but there was an election again electable is a electable isn't like a child isn't born electable like with blue eyes or like dark hair you know it's not it's not like a it's not a, a it's not an adjective to describe like a human characteristics i mean it's tall or you know they have a deep voice electable is a reflection of how you do in elections a cr crazy idea i know uh, by the way, I'm badly in spend, uh, Michael. There's a, there's, a, there's a Labour majority of around 3,000 there. I personally think that's as good as gone. If, if big if, Tracy uh, Brabin no longer is going to be the MP there. And guess what? Keir Starmer, Sir Keir Rodney Starmer, you plonker, has already picked his candidate. They've already, lots have already selected their candidate. It's somebody who's not from the area and has a big flash. I think it's Mercedes. So I'm sure that's going to go down really well. And I'm sure it will be just as great a result as Paul Williams was in Hartlepool. Congratulations. The professionals are back. The grown-ups are running the Labour Party all over again. What you saw there was a Labour politician, a Labour frontbencher, essentially making excuses for why the Labour Party lost. 
and in making those excuses said essentially well the conservatives are very good and we're not very good and this is what we've seen in the run-up to this election as well i mean i, I think probably the the reasons they've lost this election are, um, are more to do with a longer term story um that involves essentially brexit also you know two leaderships who weren't particularly popular um keir starmer it seems evidently from the polling less so than the previous one or not from the polling from the results but th this story that they've told because they're more concerned with making excuses for the leadership and attacking the left when they're asked why are you polling poorly they don't say look we're not interested in the polls what we're interested in is selling our very concrete vision and saying what we're going to do is invest in in a green industrial revolution etc cetera, etc cetera, so we actually remember what they stand for no they say oh the reason we're polling um poorly is because actually the conservatives have had a really good pandemic um they're doing a really great vaccine roll out and also the Labour Party is really shit. Um, Labour Party has no connection to ordinary people. Um, we have all of these extremist members. Um, so yeah, the, the reason the Tories are doing really well is because they're great and we're shit. It, it's the opposite of what you should do as a politician because also it's not even honest. I mean, they say, oh, the reason we're doing bad is because the pandemic helps the Conservatives. The pandemic helps the Conservatives because even though they've made error after error after error, which led to the, one of the highest death tolls in the world, you didn't make it stick because you were too busy attacking people in your own party. And now when you're not polling very well, you're saying, oh, actually, no, the Tories, the Tories are great. Um, vaccine rollout, brilliant. We're shit, right? It's not a way to win an election. All of this reminds me of this old gag in The Simpsons about the US Democrats. A cartoon at the Democratic Convention and the banners are, we hate life and ourselves, we can't govern. Now, I can't think of a better parody of Keir Starmer's Labour at this point in time. You ask them, what's your vision? What do you offer? Oh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to change ourselves. We're going to change the Labour Party because no one likes us. And so, so how are you going to beat the other guys? Oh, it's going to be really hard to beat the other guys because actually they're doing really well. Right? That, that's, that's literally the Labour Party strategy at this point in time. Why vote for us? I don't know because they're great and we're shit. It doesn't work.